In this tutorial we're going to continue our look at methods and this is going to be our first attempt at actually creating a method. Uh, so this is essentially a custom method. So first thing we need to talk about is the structure that you need to create in order to have your own method. Uh, Java and the other curly bracket languages have a lot of structure associated with them so you should already be familiar with some of the structure. For example the overall class structure which is with its outer set of brackets and a main method which is another type of method and whenever you run a program the main method is going to be the method that executes first so you've actually already written your own custom methods in the past if you've ever written a main method so now what we're going to do is we're going to add to that so the main method is the simply the first method, that's why it's the main, it is the main method that will run when you execute uh, the program associated with a particular class. And I'm going to talk about another couple of concepts. Uh, one of them is modular programming, which I'll be exploring throughout this entire series of tutorials on methods, and also the idea of testing your methods. So let's imagine that we want to create a pretty simple method to um, a method to output uh, a mailing address slash label. Now I'm obviously I'm not actually going to print this on an envelope I'm just going to display it to the screen. So in order to do this we actually create something that's almost identical to our main method except we're going to go ahead, we're going to give it a different name. So we do our public static void just as we did before and this one I'm going to call print address. I'm using the camel case naming convention starting with a lowercase letter and then because print address is made up of two different words I use a capital A to denote the second word. This is the same naming convention we use for variables and just like my main method I have the open bracket close bracket structure I have an open round bracket close round bracket here. In my main method between there I have the common or a common it appears in all main methods string arcs. We're not going to have anything between the brackets now. That's something that we'll be introducing in a later tutorial. So what does it mean to print out an address? Well I'm just going to use the system.out.println methods and just put in somewhere street and I'll do a few different lines Okay, so we've got a fake address, a fake town, a fake province, and a fake postal code to go along with this. Um, now that I've created this print address method and provided I've done it correctly, I can actually now, whenever I need to print an address, the idea is I could have had this code in my main method. Obviously, this is pretty simple code. There's nothing new or special about it. And now I'm going to get into the idea of modular programming, at least to scratch the surface of it. The reason why we create methods for things like this is so that I can, first of all, I can replace that code with print address. And this all presupposes the idea that I need to print address at multiple places in my code and I don't mean multiple places as in a loop. I don't mean that I need to just do this many times in a row. What I mean is that my program might have some useful code and then I might call print address again under different circumstances and then I might have some more useful code and then I might call print address again and under those circumstances that's why I have print address available to be called just by command. 
because now I don't have to duplicate this code over and over again. I just have a single line that I need to uh, use to invoke this method whenever it's useful for me. So you have to imagine part of the reason why we create methods is because we want to create these modules, modular programming, we want to create these useful modules that we can access anytime. Another reason for doing this is um, it's another aspect of modular programming which is if I make a mistake let's say I change let's say print address actually has to change I've got this address wrong it's actually 321 and I've got this postal code wrong it's actually supposed to be R3R3R3 by doing this in a modular way by doing it as a method by doing it as a subroutine I can now make corrections to this in one location rather than making corrections to the code in multiple locations, which is what I would have to do if I had done this instead. If I had, if I had these big chunks of code throughout my program, then if I need to make a change to this postal code, make another change, that's supposed to be a T, well, now I have to go and find all of the instances where that change is required. But if we go back to my original modular program, I only have to make that change in one place. Of course, the code I'm dealing with here is, is trivial. It's entirely trivial. But if you extend your thinking to imagine more complicated code, um, then being able to make a repair in one location is so much better than having to make that repair in multiple locations. And the last thing I'm going to talk about here is the idea of testing your methods. It's very important before you start using your method throughout your program, it really is very important that you test it and make sure that it does things exactly the way that you want it to and then you go ahead and start using it throughout your program. Now because a method is so nicely self-contained and you can just you can run it just by saying its name or writing its name in your code, it makes it very easy for you to test it and to isolate it and then to make sure that it does exactly what it is that you want it to do. So I'm going to add a second custom method which is one that's going to lead into something I'm going to do later and actually in doing this I think I'll do it normally I really recommend you put all of your methods either before or after the main method but it actually doesn't matter Java does not care the Java compiler does not care where you put your methods so just to illustrate that I'll put this other one after my main method and this one is going to be print line of characters. That's a pretty long-winded name. It's not ideal, but here I'm erring on the side of clarity rather than trying to make things really efficient and, um, and short. So I want to create a method to print out a line of characters and this method will print or output a line of the, I'm going to use the at symbol, um, and let's say with 20 symbols. So I could, very crudely, I could just go system.out.println and I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. up to 20 and that will work. That doesn't make me very happy from an elegant programming point of view and the problem with that one is, and let me actually finish that, it's again this idea of modular programming. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That will work just fine. But let's say I change my mind and I want this to be, oh, no, I changed my mind. I want it to be 35. Well, now I have to go and manually add in another, in this case, another 15 on top of that. And if other changes come along, I have to deal with them all manually. Whereas for int i equals 0, i less than 35, i plus plus. Now I've created a counted loop and in that counted loop I'm going to go system.out.print not print line but print. I'm going to print that single character on the same line. I'm going to finish my loop 
and then a system dot out dot print line to complete the line so this will print out however many characters I've requested and this one will print the line at the end and I'm going to use this in further tutorials this this method in particular but here are now I've shown you two custom methods and of course if I was going to do this I really should include a print line of chars and let's compile this make sure that I haven't made any mistakes with it everything seems fine and then when I take a look at my output window you can see it prints out that address and then it prints out, prints out that line of characters if I now decide I want to make a change to this let's make it 65 I don't have to make any change other than that number compile that run it again and now I have 65 characters printed out on the same line so even there that modular thinking the idea that why don't you write a program so that if you have to make a change to the program it's an easier change to make it's not always easier to write a program that way but it is almost always better to write a program that way okay that's it for this tutorial on creating our first custom method um, looking at structure and thinking about the idea of modularity and how we're going to make use of this.